<laughs> Boo! Did I get you? Okay, well, from the title of this video, you've probably guessed that today we're gonna do some pumpkin carving. Now, traditionally, what you do is you carve the scariest thing that you can think of onto the pumpkin. So when the lights go down, it looks suitably menacing in the dark. So I was thinking to myself, what's the scariest thing I can think of to carve into a pumpkin? And then things got a bit existential. And I thought, myself. <laughs> So that's not completely true because a couple of years ago I did actually carve my own face into a pumpkin but it wasn't that scary. <laughs> I look supremely non-threatening so this time I'm going to do something a bit different and I'm going to photoshop myself as a vampire before I make the stencil that I'm going to carve onto this pumpkin. So it should be a little bit more frightening at the very least for me if not for everybody else. <laughs> So the first thing I'm going to need to do is make myself a stencil. <laughs> Literally, actually, make my, myself into a stencil. <laughs> and to do that, obviously, first of all, I'm going to need a selfie. And after that, I'm going to stick that selfie in Photoshop and mess around with it until I have an image that just has three colours, black, white and grey. The white parts, I'm going to cut all the way through the pumpkin. The grey parts, I'm going to just cut the skin off and the black parts I'm going to leave exactly as they are. Hopefully it's not too obvious that my camera just gave up filming and I've had to move it slightly. So I know from experience that the way to get a good likeness out of one of these stencils is to start with an image that's got quite high contrast because that makes it obvious where the light and dark areas of the image are when you're making your stencil. So I want to take a picture of myself that emphasizes the highlights and shadows of my face. Um, so I need some dramatic lighting. Currently in my flat, the most dramatic lighting is probably in the bathroom. <laughs> or at least that's the place I can control the lighting the best because there's no natural light, so it's just my smart lights. So let's go there. Welcome to my bathroom. Oh, bugger. No, this is not dramatic enough. Alexa, set bathroom lights to 50%. Thanks. Okay, I think we got it. So, after sorting through all the pictures from the bathroom selfie session, I was actually a bit disappointed because despite my efforts to make the lighting as dramatic as possible, I didn't quite get as much contrast on the images as I was hoping for. But this one was the best of a bad bunch, so I selected that to be my base image to make my stencil out of. And after a few minutes, a few hours on Photoshop, I ended up with a stencil like this. So here is a sped up version of that process. And now let me walk you through what I did. Ooh, creepy. The first thing to do is to turn yourself into a vampire. And what is a vampire's most notable feature? The fangs. So I gave myself some fangs. I literally just used the smudge tool, clicked on my teeth and dragged them down my face. Uh, but of course my lips came with them. So step two was to fix my lips. Then vampires always kind of look a bit angry and a bit sassy and I really don't naturally have that going on so I used the liquify tool to give myself a more mean expression. The next thing I did was to start working on the highlights in the image so I took the areas that were just pure white 
and went over them with a brush to make them really stand out. Before taking the burn tool and starting to go over some of the shadows and the darker areas to add that contrast. Overall, the picture was still a bit too bright, so it was hard for me to tell where the most extreme highlights were. So I lowered the brightness of the whole thing before using an adjustment layer to increase the contrast. And then I used the burn tool some more. Now we're starting to actually see patches of highlights and shadows that are more clearly defined. So this was about the right time to switch into grayscale. And then I actually started drawing over some of the darker areas with just a black brush. So if you remember, the black areas of the stencil are where we're going to leave the pumpkin alone, the white areas are where we're going to cut all the way through, and the grey areas are where we're just going to cut the skin off. So if I want to have my face stand out in the middle of the pumpkin, what I really want is for the background to be just plain black, unadulterated pumpkin. So I started painting over the background of the image with just a black brush. Now you can see I've left this kind of white halo around the outside. And the reason for that is, usually the shadow on people's faces tends to be around the edge. Shadows are dark, so on the stencil, they would end up being black, and if the background is also black, you can see here, you don't get very good definition of the shape of their face, they just kind of merge into the pumpkin. And we want to be able to see the profile of the person, so I found the best way to do that is to leave just a little halo of light most of the way around. Why not all the way around? Well, this halo is cut all the way through the pumpkin, so if we continued it the whole way around my face, there's nothing for all of the bits of pumpkin in the middle to be attached to, and my face would just fall through into the pumpkin. So I've left this area here as black, so that there's still something for my face to be anchored to. The rest of it's just kind of more of the same. Using the burn tool to go over some of the shadows, using a white brush to draw over some of the highlights, and then starting to get a grey brush to go over the mid-tones and carrying on really. Now the stencil is more or less done but that black and grey are a little bit difficult to tell apart so just to make it easier for me to see I threw on a curves layer just to lighten up that grey. And the very final thing I did was to posterize the image to three colours so I can guarantee there's no intermediate shades, it's just black, grey, and white. And then you're done. That's the stencil. Ta-da! The next job is to print it out. Bring back the pumpkin! That genuinely shook the camera. I have printed myself in small, medium, and almost life-size. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this nice flat surface of pumpkin and just eyeball which of these will fit best. The little one looks just pathetic, to be honest. So I think it's gonna be medium, or large. And the trade-off that I have to make is that the larger one, the small details will be much easier to carve, but the smaller one will distort less because I don't need to make it wrap around the curve of the pumpkin quite so much. Which one? I think I'm gonna go with the large one, but before I get started carving, I've gotta gut this pumpkin. I could probably just use all of this footage as like a separate ASMR video. <laughs> ASMR pumpkin carving. That probably already exists, doesn't it? <laughs> oh no! I'm 
covered in pumpkin. Every time. <sighs> Success. Now let's attach the stencil to the pumpkin. So this is roughly the placement that I want for my stencil. But as you can see, it's not a perfect fit because the picture is flat, the pumpkin is not. So what we're gonna have to do is put a couple of little pleats. Maybe I'll put some up here in my hair where the highlights and the shadows don't really have a lot of distinction and I'm not losing or distorting my features or the main part of my face. That should do it. So from here on in, things are gonna get juicy. <laughs> that does not sound right. <laughs> Maybe I should edit that out. When I start carving, I'm gonna release a lot of pumpkin juice and paper and pumpkin juice are not good friends. I am gonna solve that problem partially with the liberal application of sellotape. If you cover your image with sellotape, it kind of holds the paper in place. You're still gonna get a little bit of the colors running and the paper disintegrating, but it's a lot less of a problem and you're less likely to just smear it off your pumpkin if it's stuck down with tape. Okay, I guess that's it for the sellotape. That will do. It now looks something like that. I will be cutting out the main design with a craft knife, but the problem is craft knives have a tendency, even if they're very sharp, to catch on the pumpkin flesh, and as you try and drag them through, they slip and cut through other parts of your design you don't want them to. It's also quite difficult to cut curves, and there's quite a lot of curvy areas in my design, so my top tip is to prick through all of the areas of your pattern with a pin first before you start. That way you've got a lot of guide holes that your craft knife can go through. It'll make it much easier to cut curved areas. And also if the paper disintegrates, it doesn't matter because you'll be able to see the pin pricks in the pumpkin flesh. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Bugger, I've just dropped a needle on the floor. I'm gonna have to find that now before I find it with my feet later. Ugh. I tend to start with the smallest details first and work from the center to the outside just because this seems to be best from a juice management perspective. Another tip is to try and keep the pin as vertical as possible or as perpendicular to the surface of the pumpkin as possible. If you stab at an angle, you'll end up with a cut that's on an angle and what that's gonna mean is that more or less light can shine through that area of pumpkin so your design won't look quite as you'd intended. You wanna push your pin all the way through on the outlines of the white sections because those are gonna be cut all the way through the pumpkin but the gray areas were just taking the skin off. So the boundaries between gray and black areas, you only need to prick just through the skin of the pumpkin. Another top tip is don't skimp on the stabbing because the more holes you can put in the pumpkin now, the easier it's gonna to be to carve when you get your craft knife out. So even if it gives you hand cramp, just carry on. I think that might be it. I kind of look like I'm crying pumpkin tears. And if you're wondering how long this has taken, it is actually gone dark. So prepare for a pretty dramatic lighting shift because I am going to put the lights on. Let's do one last check and make sure there's nothing that we've forgotten to prick. Okay. The next step is to cut out the design. Now, I don't know if you can see, because the camera doesn't really want to focus on it, 
but these pricked outlines, it's a little bit difficult to tell which bit's meant to be what. So that's where our reject stencils are going to come in really handy, because I can use that as a guide to hopefully tell me which bits to cut out and which bits to leave alone. Um, I'm going to start with the bright white areas in the centre of the design that are cut all the way through. I'm going to leave the halo area till last, because if I did it first and I still had details to carve in this section, after I've cut all the way around the outside, the whole rest of the design is only attached to the pumpkin through this narrow section here. So if I was putting pressure in the middle of it, I might snap my face off and I don't want that to happen. So we'll leave the halo till last. What I'm also gonna do, I think, is color in some of the areas that I'm cutting out so that I don't lose track of what I'm trying to do while I'm in the middle of it. So that's it for the white areas where we cut the whole way through the pumpkin. The next bit is to just peel the skin away in all those grey areas. Right, other than the halo, I think I've actually carved all of it now. So on to the final step. Oh my God, I think I'm done. So I think I might actually be done carving now. I'm not gonna lie, that took hours. And what's more, I have no idea how it's gonna look when I put a candle in it. So I guess it's time for the big reveal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and there is not enough light from that tiny LED to have any idea, okay. Let's try that again. Bugger. These candles just don't want a light. The suspense is killing me. Go on, little candle, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. I don't know if that's gonna be enough light. I'm also concerned about, the oh, one of them's already gone out. This is not fair. Oh my God, one more try. Okay, two candles. Oh my God, it worked. Look at that. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I am pretty happy with that. So I guess now what I'm gonna do is take a butt ton of close-ups. you enjoyed watching this video because bloody hell it took me a really long time to make but I had fun and I think it came out quite good in the end I hope you agree um, maybe leave me a comment if you do or tell me who you want me to carve next also if you could consider liking this video maybe even subscribing to my channel that would be really nice that would make me feel warm and fuzzy um, happy Halloween. And in the day that it has taken me to edit this video, this is what has happened to my face. And the next morning, it looked a bit like this. Oh my God, can you see the fly? Gross.
Now that is one hell of a hangover. Help me. That wasn't good. What is good? More existential questions. I'm overthinking this. Alexa, set bathroom lights to 20%. Alexa! Oh, okay, thanks. Okay. Step one was to vampirize myself, which is a verb I have just created and it will do. Yeah, it's kind of tedious. Uh, it's not really, I enjoy it. To cut. Oh, what's that? That shouldn't be in there. Oh, why can't you yes, just talk like it? Is usually defined as to omit. Delete, excise. Jesus, oh, right. thank you, Alexa. Sure Alexa, stop.